so we have been designing sequential circuits using behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL. And in our previous videos, we have seen how we can design various flip flops using Verilog HDL. In this video, we will extend our problem and we'll see how the counters can be designed using behavioral modeling. And we'll be designing the up counter, down counter, and up down counter in this video. So we'll start with the designing of a 4-bit up counter, which is positive edge trigger with clear high. So this is how the block diagram of a 4-bit counter looks like, which is positive edge trigger. So it will be having clock as the input and the clear as the input and the outputs will be having the 4 bits. So we'll start with this first line. So we are just using clock and clear as the input and Q as the output. Next will be the declaration. So we are declaring Q, which is output. And since we are designing a 4-bit counter, so we are using the concept of a vector over here. And we are using a vector of size 4 bits. Then clock and clear are the input ports, which is clear. Then since we are designing the sequential circuit using the behavioral modeling, so Q has to be declared as a register type. And since Q is a 4-bit vector, so we have to declare Q as a register type using this particular syntax. Then we have to use the always block and in the always block, we have to pass the clock and the clear as the sensitivity list because we are doing it for the positive edge triggering and the clear signal is also your asynchronous signal. So if clear is high, then what we want, we want that our output should be set to zero. So we can put this condition like this. So if clear is high, then what will happen? Q will be set to zero. So all the four bits of Q will be set to zero. Else, what we want, we want that the counter should start counting in the ascending order. And in order to do that, we have to use just the plus operator. And this is how we can do it. So if the clear is high, then the counter is reset to zero. Otherwise, the counter will be counting in steps of one. So we have to just make use of this operator, the plus operator for the counter, which will be counting in the ascending order. So this is the design for the up counter. So we see how simple it is to design the up counter. Now suppose instead of designing a 4-bit up counter, if you have to design a 8-bit up counter, then what changes we have to make in this so that it works as a 8-bit counter? So if I change the vector size, to 8 over here. So by changing this 3 with a 7. So if I replace this 3 with a 7, then Q will become our 8-bit vector. And over here and over here also, we have to make the change. So replace this 3 with a 7, then this counter will become your 8-bit counter. So just by changing the size of the vector, you can design a counter of any size. So we see that making use of the Verilog HDL, we can design a counter of any size whether it is a 4-bit counter, 8-bit counter, 10-bit counter, or maybe more. So not much change is needed over here. But now let us look at the same uh, designing of the counter from the hardware point of view. Suppose if I ask you to design a 2-bit counter, and uh, you can design it on the breadboard. And now after you have completed with the designing of a 2-bit counter, if I ask you to uh, change this 2-bit counter to 6-bit counter, then I think you can realize how difficult it is going to be and how much time consuming it will be to upgrade your counter from a 2-bit counter to a 6-bit counter or 8-bit counter. You will be needing so much of time so that you can upgrade your counter if you are using the hardware. But over here, if you are designing the counter using your very log HDL, then you can make the change in the size of the counter by just changing the size of the window. So how easy it is to change the size of the counter if you are using the language, very long HDL. But otherwise, using the hardware, the things are going to be very, very difficult. So this is how you can realize the importance of the language and how dynamic it becomes uh, if you are using the programming to describe your hardware. So this is what I wanted to tell you the importance of the language in designing the hardware set. The things become ultra simple and you can change the counter size of your requirement within fraction of seconds. Let us see how you can write down the test bench for the up counter. So this is 
Now the first line declaring the input ports, the output ports as a wire type, instantiating. So the initial steps remain the same. Then within the initial begin, we have to initialize. So we are initializing the clock to zero and we are making clear high so that uh, our, our counter is reset to zero. And then after 10 units of delay, then we are making clear to low. If we make clear to low, then the counting will start. And then after 200 units of time, we are finishing the simulation. Since this counter is a clock driven device, so again we have to design the clock. And by making use of the always block, we can design the clock in this way. You can write down the test bench like this. And again, you can make the variation in this test bench. And according to your requirements, you can change the delays. And you can see how the output will look like. And you will see that you will be able to simulate the counter of any size. So this is how you can write down the design module and the test bench for the up counter. Now let us try to extend this problem further. Say if you don't want to design the up counter, you wish to design the down counter. Then how can it be done? So say we have to design a 4-bit down counter, which is positive and triggered with clear height. So this is the block diagram. And the few initial lines are going to remain same. Now, since we have to do it for the down counter, so the counting must decrease with every clock edge. So how we can do it? So previously for the up counter, we were using the plus operator. Here for the down counter, the only change we have to make over here, we have to replace this Q with a Q minus one. So this will work as a down counter now. So you see how easy it is to change from up counter to down counter if you are using the hardware description language like this. Again, if you had to do the same thing using hardware, changing from up counter to down counter is not going to be so easy. It is going to be very, very time consuming. You have to make changes in so many connections. But over here, by simply changing one operator, you can convert your up counter to the down counter. So this is the advantage of using the hardware description language. Now let us extend this problem further. Say if we have to design a 4-bit up-down counter, which is positive as triggered to clear. So now we'll have extra external input, which we are calling as an up-down. And it is this particular signal which will decide whether the counting has to go in the ascending order or in the descending order. So we say that if this the signal over here is high, then it will work as an up counter. If the signal over here is low, then it will work as a low counter. So suppose if we have to design such counter, making use of this Verilog HDL, the behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL, how can it be done? Over here in the first line, we have to include this extra signal also over here, which is the input. So we declare the output, which is a 4-bit. The input, we have to include this up-down signal also. The remaining things remain same. Here, we are just passing the clock because we are assuming that it is a synchronous clear. So if the clear signal is high, then what we want? We want that the output should be set to 0. And we know how can it be done. So it will set the counter to 0. Else if, if the up-down signal is high, what we want? We want that the counting should go in the ascending order. So it should count up. So if the up-down signal is high, then Q should increment. Else what we want? We want that Q should increment. So if up-down is high, then it is going to count in the upper direction. Otherwise, it will count in the downward direction. So it will work as a down counter. And this is how the design module for the up-down counter work. So we have seen how we can design a counter, a 4-bit counter, up counter, down counter, up down counter. Now let us see if I ask you to design a counter that divides the input frequency by 1024 using behavioral modeling, how can it be? So in order to do that, let us recall the basic concepts used in a counter. If we talk about a 2-bit counter, 2-bit counter is also called as a mod 4 counter. And the other name of this 2-bit counter or a mod 4 counter is a tape by 4. Why we call it as a tape by 4 counter? Because it divides the frequency by 3. If we have a 3-bit counter, then that is called as a mod 8 counter. And mod 8 counter is also called as a tape by 8 counter. Now, here in this particular exercise, what we have to do is we have to de uh, design a counter which will divide the input frequency by 1024. 
so in order to divide the input frequency by 1024 we have to decide how many bits are needed how many flip flops will be needed to divide the input frequency by 104 for divide by 8 counter how many bits are needed 3 bits are needed divide by 4 how many bits are needed 2 bits are needed so in order to divide by 1024 how many bits will be needed 10 bits will be needed so we have to design basically a 10 bit counter so i think you can design a 10 bit counter so 10 bit counter is nothing the other way of calling this 10 bit counter is divide by 1024 counter so this is a block diagram for a 10 bit counter and i think you can now design a 10 bit up counter so in the previous case when you designed the 4 bit up counter if you have to design a 10 bit counter the only change you have to make in the size of the vector so if you change the size of the vector this then you will be able to design a 10 bit counter so just by making a minor change in the program you can have your div by 1024 counter 